Jimmy Page, Robert Plant, John Paul Jones, and John Bonham. Led Zeppelin were a phenomenon for about a decade from 1968 to 1978. And I mean, it's Led Zeppelin. <laughs> Everybody knows all their songs are played on the radio. They're a huge band, started out as a huge cult following, and then just became massive and are considered one of the greatest rock bands of all time. Tons of hits, tons of amazing albums. They're really an album band. That said, I thought it'd be interesting with this band to do a top 10 or attempt to do a top 10 favorite songs with such a huge catalog and well really a very rich catalog every album having lots and lots of great songs i thought it would be an interesting challenge to try to sort of narrow it down to 10 songs that i really really love now it's obviously going to be my personal opinion i'm not saying that these are the definitive 10 you know for me, these are the definitive 10. For you, it might be something else. I don't know. It probably depends on your taste. The great thing about Led Zeppelin is that their discography is very rich. They messed with all kinds of different musical styles. They were really good musicians. And there's just some great songs, some great playing. And there's a lot to choose from. So this was really difficult, <laughs> I have to say. I have actually a much larger list here of just all the songs that I really, really love by them. And then just trying to narrow it down to a mere 10 was very difficult. So we'll start out with a few honorable mentions. And I have to do this because these songs that are in the honorable mentions were very difficult to leave off of the top 10. But there can only be 10, right? So we'll start out, out with uh, Coming Out Right. This would probably be 11 for me. Uh, is the is Battle of Evermore from Led Zeppelin IV. This is a fantastic tune. Um, I love... Just the folky, whimsical, you know, sound of it. Uh, it seems to be about sort of like a fantasy type battle. Makes me think of Lord of the Rings, that kind of thing. Uh, the guest vocalist, I'm blanking on her name now. She's from Fairport Convention. Um, uh, she's very good. She's very good in Fairport Convention as well. Check that band out if you haven't. And uh, yeah, just the way that her vocals are paired with Robert Plant's vocals are really, really well done. I love Jimmy Page's guitar work in this song. It's just a fun song, and I've always it's always been a standout track to me from Led Zeppelin IV. Next is In the Light from Physical Graffiti, which is a really, really cool opener for the second disc of this album. It's quite proggy, which I, you know, I'm a pretty big fan of prog rock, so it kind of gets that nod for me. I love John Paul Jones' keyboard work in it, but it's also just a really, really good, well-written song, and uh, it's a nice sort of little hidden gem off of that album. One that doesn't really get played as much, unfortunately, but it's a great song. I think it's one of the best songs off of Physical Graffiti. So yeah, In the Light. And then the next two are both from Led Zeppelin III. One is Tangerine, and the other is That's the Way. I love Zeppelin III. I especially love the second side of Zeppelin III, where you have just... Like, the whole side is fantastic. It shows sort of the lighter, folkier side of Led Zeppelin. And some of Jimmy Page's acoustic guitar playing is just out of this world i mean he's he's really underrated actually i think as an acoustic guitar player he's a phenomenal electric guitar player d has done some amazing soloing some riffage but he's a really really great acoustic player and uh i think people don't talk about that as much for some reason but these are two beautiful songs i mean tangerine it, it's just so catchy it gets in my head it's a it's just the melody's wonderful and uh yeah i just i love it and same with that's the way that's the way is one of the most beautiful songs that they've ever written and uh just you know everything from plants vocals to you know pages guitar playing even like the stuff john paul jones is doing is really amazing and yeah i just i love it and then the last honorable mention i'll give which this was also really really hard not to put on there one of my all-time favorite led zeppelin songs and it's ramble on from zeppelin 2 one of my favorite songs off of zeppelin 2 for sure i'm a nerd i love the lord of the rings reference in the lyrics uh just the way it's kind of starts out with the acoustic thing and then just really like like just becomes a real rocker you know and you know plants vocals and it's it's just a really really well written and, and catchy song so just a great song ramble on had to make the uh the honorable mentions for sure okay so let's get in the top 10 this was really really difficult as i've mentioned a couple times already uh so i mean there's stuff that didn't even make the honorable mentions where i'm kind of like how did that not get in there but 
you know, again, it can only be 10 songs, so here we go. Number 10 for me is What Is and What Should Never Be from Led Zeppelin 2. This song, it, it's probably my favorite song off of Zeppelin 2. I have some fond memories of it, of it. I will kind of preface with that. Uh, I have, you know, there's a little nostalgia with it just because I specifically remember listening to Led Zeppelin 2 on cassette tape in my car with uh, my friend Ned. Shout out to you, Ned. And we would always jam, especially to this song, because some of the lyrics are... Some of what Plant's singing is a little undiscernible, and, you know, Ned and I used to just, like, make up lyrics, and it was really funny. But it's just a great tune. It just starts out, you know, If I say to you tomorrow... just goes right into it. And then just when it gets to the... When it gets to the, uh, you know, the the main verse there, you know, Castle Wind, say it, you know, just so, so good. And then uh, Plants, or sorry, Paige's guitar work in it is, is phenomenal. The riffing, and it gets kind of psychedelic-y in the middle there, and, uh, you know, the breakdown's great, and everything that is they do in that song is phenomenal. The drums are great, the, the bass work from John Paul Jones, just... Uh, just amazingly structured tune and uh, one that I don't get sick of. Zeppelin 2 is an album I may have overplayed a little bit, but I still really love this song and I had to include a song from Zeppelin 2 on it. So for sure, what is and what should never be is number 10. Number 9 is from the latter part of their career and it's from the album Presence and it's Achilles' Last Stand. This was a song that uh, I didn't hear initially until a few years after I became a Zeppelin fan because I always kind of... I kind of, not ignored, but uh, like I didn't listen to Presence and In Through the Outdoor quite as much as the rest of the material. So uh, my brother-in-law kind of told me about this song, and uh, it's it's cool. Like again, going back to the whole me being a prog nerd, this is probably the most progressive song they've ever done, and uh, just everything. It's really layered, it's, uh, it's very, very good. Uh, the drumming, the drumming on Presence is some of Bonham's best drumming i was listening to it to the other day and uh this song he really really just like he he's amazing on achilles last stand and i lo i just love that the the song kind of takes you on a journey i'm a big fan of like epic songs like this and uh, it's a great way to open the the record the only thing is it kind of opens <laughs> presence kind of opens with the best song and the rest of the album's great but it's like ah you get the best one right in the beginning so I don't know I love Achilles' Last Stand. The lyrics are really interesting. The the you know there's some great riffs in it, and it's just it's it's a fun song, and I had to make my top ten. So number nine is Achilles' Last Stand. Number eight is from Led Zeppelin three, and it's part of that whole second side of the record that I really love, and it's Gallows Pole. Um, going back to Jimmy Page's acoustic playing, he is amazing on this song. I think it's some of his best acoustic work. I love the lyrics to it. It's, uh, you know, it's it's just really, really interesting. And uh, some of what Plant's doing is is really amazing vocally. So uh, yeah, I just, I like when Plant sings a little more mellow. And then, you know, he also go, gets into the higher register and what have you in this song. But it's, uh, it's, it's really well written. The melodies are great. The acoustic guitar playing's, well, I mean, all the musicianship is great. But yeah, Gallows Pole, I also think this one's also a little underrated. You hear it occasionally on classic rock radio, which, uh, I mean, I don't listen to that anymore and haven't in years, but at least where I'm from uh, in the New York, New Jersey area, they play lots and lots of Zeppelin. And you'd hear this, but you wouldn't hear this nearly as much as some of the other their other bigger songs. So I had to give love to Gallows Pole. It's just a really fun, great song. So Gallows Pole is number eight. Number seven, this is one that has gone up my list recently. I've recently been in a big Led Zeppelin mood, and I've always liked this song, but recently it's just really rocking my world, and it's from Physical Graffiti, and it's Trampled Underfoot. Just the, the riff in this song is so good. It's one of Jimmy Page's greatest riffs. It's like, it's kind of funky. It's just like the keyboard work that John Paul Jones does kind of in the middle of it is amazing. It's just got a lot of energy. It's raw. It's, it's fantastic. It's like, it's for sure my favorite song off of Physical Graffiti and uh, really the highlight to me of the first the first disc or LP, whatever you want to call it, of Physical Graffiti. And it's just one that over the years, like I just hear it and I just, I love it. It's It's got a real good drive to it. And it's just uh, that that riff, you know, the dan, 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 like it just gets stuck in your head and 
you don't get sick of it. It just, I know it, it kind of is a little repetitive and everything, but it's such a, it's so good. It's hard to describe. So, uh, yeah, Trampled Underfoot is definitely number seven, rockin' tune. Number six is from my second favorite Led Zeppelin album, Houses of the Holy, and the song is Over the Hills and Far Away. Uh, again, it blends that acoustic thing, um, that, like, a little acoustic, that do 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 I mean, you guys know how the song goes. I love that whole, like, intro. Jimmy Page just kind of goes, you know, just sort of jams for a minute, and then it gets into the sort of the the softer vocals by Plant, and then it just kicks in, and you get that riff, and Plant just, his vocals soar, and it's, it's fantastic. And the lyrics are great. I mean, some some lines of the lyrics, you know, I live for my dreams in a pocket full of gold, uh, just that kind of stuff. It's it's really compelling lyrics, great, great riffage in it, uh, great acoustic playing, uh, awesome song, Over the Hills and Far Away. It's one that's probably played more than some of the others on this list that I put, but it's, it's I never get tired of this song. I think it's one of the best songs on Houses of the Holy, and uh, it's one of their best songs, really. So number six is Over the Hills and Far Away. So number five, I might get a little shit for from people who think it either shouldn't be on here or is too high, or some people who think it's too low. I don't know. For me, it's right in the middle. Number five is Stairway to Heaven from Led Zeppelin IV. A lot of people say that this song is overplayed. I never had that experience. Now, I hear this a lot from older fans of Led Zeppelin, so I don't know if it was one of those things where when this song was released, it was just overplayed way too much for many years. I don't know if that's the case. I never heard this song a ton on the radio, and not that I've ever really listened to the radio a ton. And then, I mean, really, I mean, these days, I don't spin Zeppelin 4 as much as I did when I first, you know, d got into the band, but um, I, I'm always delighted to hear Stay Right to Heaven. It's a masterpiece for a reason. I mean, I don't, I don't really need to explain this one. The lyrics are so weird, and like, I don't even think the band knows what this song is about. The the guitar playing, the drums, uh, Plant's vocals, it's all just, you know, that iconic riff, the, uh, you know, the the ending, you know, they the put a button on it with the, and she's buying a stairway to heaven. You know, it's, it's, it's iconic, it's classic. There's a lot of Led Zeppelin songs that have been overplayed for me over the years. This is not one of them. I Somehow, I did not get burnout on Stairway to Heaven, even though I know most, or a lot of people have, and I still think it's one of their greatest songs, so I don't think I need to justify it. One of the greatest guitar solos in rock, uh, Stairway to Heaven, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's wonderful. Number five is Stairway to Heaven. Number four comes from my favorite Led Zeppelin album, which is the very first one, Led Zeppelin 1, and it's Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You talking about acoustic guitar work by Jimmy Page. This, what he does, it, it has that like Spanish riff, that do 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 But then when it, it kind of breaks down and you get that like the lead playing from him on acoustic, it's 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 beautiful. Like it's it's like classical, kind of mixed with sort of like a Spanish-y sound to it. Um, you know, it's not like in terms, I know the song itself was not written by them and, you know, they took credit for it and everything, which I don't agree with, you know, morally, but I think the song itself is so good. I think I've heard the original version of this and it's way different. Like it's definitely its own thing. So to me, I don't really have as much of an issue with that as a lot of people do. Um, I understand the criticism, but to me, the song is so strong. The playing is so good. There's so much energy in it that it's it's its own thing, and it's it, to me it remains one of their their best songs. And it's also one of the songs that really, when I heard that the first time, I'm like, oh man, this band is cool. Like this band is awesome. It it was the first taste to me of like, okay, this isn't just you know meat and potatoes rock. A, a, as great as as much as I like that, and as as great as that is, um, there's a little more to this band. So I, I love Babe. I'm gonna leave you. It's one of the reasons why Zeppelin One is my favorite album by them although obviously there's other great songs on there as well but it's just it's a fantastic song i never get sick of it and yeah babe i'm gonna leave you number four number three is my favorite song off of led zeppelin four this was i suppose to use my co-host of the podcast uh andy's term this was this was a grower for me over the years and it's uh when the levee breaks this is without a doubt one of zeppelin's 
greatest tunes. Uh, just the riffage, the Delta Blues sound, the dirty, raw sound of it, the riff, the... And uh, Robert Plant's just vocals in it. It's so good where this song goes, like that driving riff, the drums, like everything. It's just, it's a perfect rock and roll tune. It's the best of, I think, the one of the best examples of you know, just great blues, hard rock. It's it's phenomenal, and I will always love when the levee breaks. It's it's uh it's such a great tune. So for me, number three is when the levee breaks. Okay, the top two. What could possibly be the top two greatest songs by this amazing band? Well, for number two, we're going back to Zeppelin one again, and I'm going Dazed and Confused. Now I know this is one of their most popular songs, but man. You know, first of all, there's so songs like this that get popular for a reason, I should say. I'm not shouldn't trying to justify liking some of the more popular songs, but this is a song where it's just so perfectly constructed. I play a little bass, and uh, I love the bass intro. Boom, 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 boom. And then you get that subtle, like, wow, wow, you know, from from Paige. And it starts out kind of slow, and, 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 you know, Plant does that, you know, been dazed and confused. But then when it really kicks in, and you get that, like, that just, that face-melting riff from Jimmy Page. And, you know, the the drums, like, the whole thing. There's so much energy to it. And then when it breaks down, that whole section in the middle where it gets psychedelic and the guitar just soars. And you get all, like, some of, I know some people don't like plant sort of, like, uh, yell, you know, shouting and screaming and all that stuff he'll do. The, you know, baby, and that kind of thing. I think it really works well in this song. And, uh... Like, there's live versions of this that are fantastic, and I just love that whole breakdown in the middle where they're just they're just jamming, and it gets really psychedelic and trippy, and it's just, it's so, so good. It's one of my favorite guitar solos by Jimmy Page, and it all kind of crashes together at the end. It's it's just, it's wonderful. You know, and then at the dan 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 da 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 like the drums, ugh. I mean, I, you guys know the song. I don't, <laughs> I don't need to keep doing that, but anyway, it's so good. I love Dazed and Confused. There's a reason it's one of their greatest songs ever written, and it's a big, another big reason why Zeppelin One is my, probably my favorite Led Zeppelin album. Amazing stuff. And now we get to the number one. So, what to me is the number one Led Zeppelin song? Well, it's you know, for anybody who knows me, they might not be all that surprised, but and from even just from what I've said, but yeah, for me, number one, it's coming from Houses of the Holy. It's No Quarter. I mean, No Quarter is a masterpiece. I love everything about it. You know, this is very much a John Paul Jones special. I think he's underrated in terms of, you know, the band. Everybody talks about Plant or Page or even Bonham. They couldn't have done half of what they did if it wasn't for John Paul Jones. And uh, the, the keyboard work he does in this, the beginning, you know, it's so good, especially if you hear, like, live versions of it. There's an amazing one off of the bootleg Snow Jobs that I really love. Um, you know, they they played this live a bunch, and it, it just so well done live. Uh, it's one of their most musically interesting pieces. I love how it's kind of like psychedelic, progressive, whatever you want to call it. The riff's great, the tone of Jimmy Page's guitar, um, you know, the, the, the piano again and keyboard work sort of in the middle. Uh, Plant's vocals, probably, I probably... I know there's an ef kind of an effect on his vocals, and it's like a little weird. I think it works really well for the song. I've heard a little cri criticism of that, too, of his vocals on the song, but I think it's great. It's The lyrics are really cool. Another song about sort of Norse mythology kind of thing, and uh, yeah, it's just a, it's a, it's a killer tune. I never get sick of this song, and it's always, you know, anytime I think of what is my favorite Led Zeppelin song, no question, it's no quarter. It's just... You know, the no quarter, quarter, quarter. You know, it's just so, so good. <laughs> I Again, I have to keep singing it for you guys because you know, you've apparently never heard these songs before. <laughs> but yeah, number one, Zeppelin's masterpiece, No Quarter. So that's it. That's my top 10 favorite Led Zeppelin songs. This was really hard to do. There's so many songs I didn't even mention that are amazing. This was a challenge, you know, with a, a band like Zeppelin, they have so many great songs. There's other bands too. Like it would be very hard to do a top 10 Pink Floyd songs or the Beatles or, you know, name your favorite classic band here. You know, there's, there's bands like this that just have so many great songs. It's like, how do you narrow it down? I think I pretty much narrowed it down. This list could change 
week by week, year by year, whatever. Um, you know, there's been songs I've liked a lot that have kind of gone down the list, you know, over the years. There's songs that, you know, maybe I didn't like as much and suddenly, you know, they're in the top 10, you know. So they're one of those bands where, you know, I've been listening to them for years. They were one of those sort of bands that got me into music. And, you know, I've waxed and waned with them as a whole. I mean, there's times I've liked them less. There's times I listen to them more. Lately, I've been on a big Zep kick, so it was cool to do this and uh, kind of revisit their catalog. I listen to all their albums, and uh, I think for now, this is probably my definitive list. So what are your favorite 10 Led Zeppelin songs? Uh, you know, what are your favorite albums? Should I do more of these kind of videos? I've been thinking about maybe trying to do some more top 10, you know, song videos, because I've... I always rank albums, but I never really do songs because songs are a lot harder, but it was an interesting challenge, so I'm willing to try it again. But anyway, that's it for me, guys. Thank you for watching. Please check out our podcast, uh, Talkin' Muzak, on this channel and wherever podcasts are available. Uh, this I'll probably just have as a YouTube video just because it kind of fits more in the YouTube mold. But uh, yeah, appreciate everybody watching and have a good one. Peace.